let's talk about fantasy anime. It seems to be a big trend right now that there's a lot of anime set in fantasy worlds. I should point out, not just science fiction, you know, not just, um, you know, weird fantastical things, not, not anime where fantastical things happen in the modern world or in some version of the modern world, but where characters are, th are thrown in or live in a, a recognizably fantasy world. And that is a thing. Um, Abi Rao in the chat room um, asked whether we're talking about fantasy or isekai. And I am actually not familiar with that term. Um, so I'm going to look it up real quick. Um, so in this case, I am, I am speaking specifically. So isekai means, you know, transport to another world shows or concepts. Um, so I'm talking about transporting to another world where that other world is fantastical, right? Where there are, you know, swords, orcs, goblins, mech, you know, um, fantasy mecha, things along those lines. It doesn't have to have orcs or swords, but where, you know, it has to be, um, not just, you know, a, an alternate version of the current world, right? Not a, a shard of current reality. It has to be a recognizably different world. Um... Also, I, I am talking here about, there it is, um, um, particularly about, um, related to this is the trapped in an MMO genre, which I would argue is not this, but is related in the sense that, you know, I think that is feeding in to this trend, but we've got, we had Grimgar Fantasy and Ash where the characters are definitely transported into a, you know, fantasy world. There's no indication they're in a video game, per se. Um, <coughs> um, uh, and then you got, like, Record of Grand Crest War, where it's just, it's characters in a fantasy world, right? Um, and so it seems like this is becoming a, th a thing, a trend. Um, is Isekai, um... Right, and, 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 you know, a, I mean, medieval is a, a tough word because it's like, well, you know, um, El Hazard is not medieval, but I would argue it fits. Um, um, I mean, maybe it is medieval Middle Eastern, but uh, yeah, it, it's hard. Um, it doesn't have to have magic, but it almost always does because why not have magic, which is one of those, one of those things. Um, but then uh, there have been at least two anime series where a a portal opened up to a fantasy to a fantasy world from modern Japan, and like the government knows about it and has and is deliberately sending people from the modern world to this fantasy world through a stable portal. So you have that as well as a as a concept, and it just seems kind of interesting. Yeah, Gate right uh, being one of them. So there's that, this whole thing where certainly, you know, compared to Mecca, there's a lot more of these recently, uh, compared to, uh, oh gosh, I mean, I'm not seeing that many sports anime these days. They're certainly out there, you know, the sports anime are always out there, but we're certainly not overwhelmed with sports shows at the moment. Uh, we certainly seem to have, you know, anime in there. Um... And so the question is, why is this popular now? Why are we getting shows set in a fantasy world? Particularly because you have to create the fantasy world. Right? This is not cheap. That's you know, always follow the money. And the, you know, the obvious answer usually is, okay, it's less expensive. Well, this is not less expensive. Um, um, yeah, I have not seen a rise in sci-fi anime. There's... There's there are a few more sci-fi anime now than there were I would say in the 2000s, but it's certainly not spiking in a huge way. The, the way fantasy seems to be that way. Um, so it doesn't seem to be related directly to sci-fi. Now, it, it's it's hard to tell, obviously, why anything is. There are lots. There are always many different reasons. And some of it is just trends, right? If one thing becomes popular, other people copy it, so it becomes a trend. You know, things 
you know, one thing leads to another. Um, it's not that everyone sat down and said, let's make fantasy anime. Lots of different factors involved. But we're certainly seeing it more often now. And what I want to bring up is this question that people argued a, a particular argument around the slice-of-life romance shows of the 2000s, the, the, light, the, the visual novel adaptations and such, the you know, modern romance stories, key, those, I'm sorry, um, canon, all those things. And they argued that at the time, because Japan was going through an economic malaise where the economy was growing a bit, things were okay, but things really weren't accelerating out of the economic bust of the 90s, you know, as rapidly as folks wanted to. And there was a rise in Hikikomori and Neats and social trouble, you know, um, and then we had the whole problem with the... Um, the the um Aum Shinrikyo incident which shook, shook up a lot of people so the argument back then is that all of these modern romance series were anime fans wanting to kind of retreat to a a a modern fantasy right a a fantasy in the sense of wouldn't it be awesome to be a young person surrounded by cute members of the opposite sex and trying to decide which one of those I want to end up with in my life. You know, a, a harem anime series or a reverse harem anime series is a very easy, you know, kind of fantasy to indulge in. So the idea is, kind of in terms of the, the national zeitgeist, that's what people kind of wanted to, to imagine. And they were kind of reverting back to high school years, kind of imagining what it was like back in high school years when things were easier than they are when you're an adult. Right. That's the argument. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with that analysis, but I think it's an interesting argument. So now the question is, um, is, a, is a similar trend going on right now with anime? Are all these fantasy series similarly a, an easy escape for people to imagine, well, I can understand the modern world, but I can understand a world of knights and orcs. Right. Um, well, I don't agree with that because a I always find it suspicious when people when people say this is that, that, when people make arguments about a national character. I I don't think those ever hold water. I don't think a I don't think a thing is popular because all of the people in this race or this country believe this thing or want this thing. Um, or that, you know, a large percentage of them do. I, I, you know, I think things are popular for multiple reasons. Things are successful for multiple reasons. Um, it, it, it's rarely because of, of a, a trend in national consciousness, right? That's just not, um, that's a, that's, that's all, almost always a specious argument. Um, and also... It's it's always dangerous saying those things from the outside. Where like I know things about the Japanese economy and Japanese education system, but I'm no expert on those, you know. And I know what anime says about this. I know what certain people have said about those systems, right? But I I don't know really what that system is like in the real world practically. Also importantly, remember, you know, um, the Japanese educational system in Japan is not what it comes across in anime. Um, it's off, it's usually not what it comes across in articles written about the Japanese educational system because people writing those come to it from a, you know, from a certain perspective where they're, they're trying to prove a certain point. Uh, you know, reality is not the way it's often presented to us in media. So that's the problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's certainly much more nuanced than that. And that is pro you know, in other words, I'm saying that is likely a factor. It is likely a serious factor. But, so... I'll put it this way. It is like saying the American Civil War was fought over slavery. You know, that war was fought over a number of different things, some big, some small, of which slavery was definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest factor. But there are lots of other things going on there, you know, that you, know, you will not understand that conflict unless you understand all the different things going on politically and socially at that point that led into that war. That's what I'm saying. 
Um, <clears throat> so, retreat into fantasy, I think, is, is an interesting perspective. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I, I, and I'm, I'm, I, the question, though, is if we're talking about fantasy anime, is that, are they really retreating anywhere? Is... Is, an, is fantasy a useful retreat? And the reason I say that is because fantasy can... Mm, one of the reasons people generally write fantasy and read fantasy is to understand a completely different system. You know, a system of government, system of politics and forces. You know, when folks world build a sci-fi or fantasy world, there's a lot of work involved in that. So it's not necessarily simpler. Um, it is usually less complex, just because you have to fit it all into a show or a, a novel. But I'm not, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not convinced that a fantasy series is necessarily um, simpler in that way. Um, well, JPEG, um, JPEG says, um, but but those are tropes of fantasy. Right, those are not necessarily tropes of anime in general, um, but let's think. I mean, I, I, I certainly I hear what Karyon's saying that harem is easier to sell in a fantasy setting. That's certainly true, and it's also increasingly true as it's becoming harder to sell a world where you know half a dozen girls are all interested in the same guy. Um, you know, that's just uh, it's again easier to create a world in which that is is a thing. Um, and in which, you know, the guy is literally important in some world-shaking way. Um, are you absolutely right, Spinduin? We are not out of the Slice of Life harem anime era. Although, on the, on the other hand, I think we've always, you know, you could argue we've been in the harem anime world since Urusai Yatsura, right? You know, we've had, um, harem anime, although harem really came in in the 90s. But, you know, this thing has been around for decades and decades. Um, I, I, and certainly Slice of Life has become, I mean, again, I'd argue there, there are certainly Slice of Life anime back in the 80s, um, and in the 90s, definitely Slice of Life stuff back in the, in the 80s and 90s, but it became a big, th it became a major trend in the 2000s, and it's certainly with us, um, to hear. And it, it's, one of the complex things is that, right, there, there's a difference between this genre is now part of the industry, and this genre is now the bulk of the industry. Right? I think that harem became a thing in the 90s, and now we're always going to have harem as a trope. Um, it will sort of come in and out, but it's always going to be integrated into the anime industry one way or the other as a thing. Um, so, you know, I don't, think that, I don't think we're ever going to... I don't think we'll ever be out of that, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, a defining element of anime, right? <laughs> right, it comes down to relevance. Well, it, it comes down to to you know, um, when anime changes, is that a fulcrum around which it changes? Right, um, Haruhi Suzumiya was a changing point because it was taking moe trends and pointing in a different direction and saying, okay, uh, you know, here is, here's this whole Moe harem thing, but let's tell a, a, a an intricate story within that. Um, and when that was happening, uh, you know, the fact that Moe was the trend and that's kind of what they were, they were having fun with in Harui Suzumiya, um, proved that Moe was a major relevant trend, Right. <laughs> um, I, I would certainly I, I've seen very little Steinsgate but Steinsgate is definitely science fiction um, I don't know how harem it is but it's absolutely science fiction yeah, I don't know how you have a series about time travel and not classified as science fiction. <laughs> That's interesting, Bruno. Um, Isekai sells an idea of a common person in competitive Japan 
in a setting where their modern knowledge makes them overqualified. Um, so, Spin, I, 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 I'm not arguing that, that Science Gate is not harem. I'm saying it is also absolutely science fiction. Right? I mean, because it, it, the premise, you know, the premise is science fiction. Um, that may be a, a relatively minor element, but, right. Um, but I, I like that idea, Bruno. I think that you, you got something there, definitely, where bringing modern knowledge to a fantasy setting is empowering. And I think that, that also works into our earlier comment that if this is about um, sort of escape and it's about trying to get to a different world, it's not just about, oh, I want to be in a different setting. It is saying, actually, this stressful environment is an advantage. You know, all of the things being being thrown at me actually make me a more effective person in at least this other context. I think that's very, that's very wise. That's a really great point. Um, and it's, it would be an interesting evolution of that idea where, you know, kind of regressing back to high school and the idea of being surrounded by cute girls or guys is fine and fun, but it is kind of this regressive fantasy. Um, right? Um, whereas that is an evolution. It's saying, as a programmer, as a, um, an office worker, as somebody who's gotten ahead of life, as somebody who started a family, you now know how to handle yourself. You're seeing this in a lot of these manga where you're reincarnated as like a slime or a goblin. That is absolutely true. People are using that past experience to make them better in this new life. That's really interesting. Um, so J. Pegasus is saying, uh, maybe the fantasy genre got stagnant. The producers are just taking anything that are new or unique. You know, it sells. They got really nothing to lose. That's an interesting point too. I think that's also... Um, uh, uh, that's also true that fantasy has always been a a through line in anime. There's always been fantasy anime series to one extent or another, going all the way back to uh, Sally the Witch in '66. So yeah, it, it's out there. But I think I think you're right. I think it did get to a point where it's like, okay, fantasy just kind of is fantasy. What can we do with it? Um, you know, I think you you saw that in, in Record of Lotus War. Where it's like, let's bring D and D tabletop style fantasy to anime, and see where that brings us, and that that created a whole little subgenre, and that definitely definitely changed things around. Um, wait, well, sometimes it's about knowledge, and yeah, it's, it's sometimes about tropes. I think it's also to that point about being an otaku. The, the people involved... Sorry, one second. Ah. I've got a little fly that's bumping around. Um, yep, B Berserk's a fantasy anime series. But it, Berserk in Japan, as a kind of a side note, definitely fantasy. Um, Berserk in Japan is acknowledged as a manga masterwork. So they don't really... You know, the anime doesn't have to be remarkable. It writes, it's like adapting... It's a good example. Um, Wuthering Heights, you know, or Of Mice and Men, or whatever, where you can make an adaptation of that, but no one's expecting that to be the definitive version of that thing. The book is the definitive version of that thing. So Berserk's in a weird place. Um, the same is kind of like with Akira, where everyone's like, the Akira anime film is amazing, but we know the book is this ridiculously massive thing that no one's ever going to adapt effectively, right? Um... So Berserk's weird. Um, but yeah, the, uh, to your point, Spin to Win, there's a, another aspect of that where you're, it is people bringing their otakuness, and I mean that in the broader sense, bringing their expertise as a fan of the genre to that genre and understanding where things, sh you know, uh, how things work and how things should work. Uh, contrast with, for example, Grimgar, which is kind of the opposite of that. It is about saying you don't know what you're doing you don't have these tools and you have to adapt. And so it's about being adaptable. Which has been an inter a very interesting thing to argue. If we argue that a lot of this is about bringing your expertise and about bringing, 
your skills to the party. Grimgar is, is very much an inverse of that, and I wonder where that would fit into that whole um, analysis. <clears throat> um, and you're right, Bruno. You know, medieval settings in fiction aren't... They don't reproduce really any of the politics, any of the power struggles of actual medieval life. I'm actually doing a lot of research on this right now. Um, I've been reading, and here's a recommendation for you. Mm. Um, the Time Traveler's Guide to Medieval England is a very useful little book by Ian Mortimer. Uh, and this is basically, it, not, it doesn't quite pretend, I mean, it doesn't get in universe, but it says, if you were to travel back to medieval England, here's how it, that is, here's how that does not conform to your expectations. And here's how, here's how to really live with how things, you know, really worked back then. Uh, there's also a series called Life in a Medieval Village, Life in a Medieval City, Life in a Medieval Castle by uh, Franz Gies and Joseph Gies. I'm probably mispronouncing those as well. Let me try getting out of the way of that, see if it can... doesn't want to focus on this. Apologies. Weird. Oh, well. Um... And uh, uh, George R. R. Martin uses this series a lot, uh, or used it a lot for, for researching Game of Thrones. And you're absolutely right. You know, fantasy is not medieval Europe. It is this convenient, weird, tropey amalgam of, of simplifications, which, again, makes things kind of simple. Now, the funny thing is, um, especially in literature... So, yeah, fantasy literature, but also more broadly in speculative fiction. One of the reasons you do speculative fiction is because you you use the world to comment on something. You, know, you are simplifying the world because you want to hone in on one aspect of that and focus on that for your novel. So you don't want all of the realism because the realism would take half the book to explain. I'm not seeing that so far in fantasy anime. I'm not seeing them use the fantasy series to make a big comment about how society should function, about how people should function, besides the normal, you know, shonen style tropes of we should all work together. So I wonder where that fits in terms of whether, um, that's, I, I think it gets back to what you were saying earlier. Um, um, who was saying that? Um, um, that, yeah, J uh, JPEG says what you were saying, that I think it sells, fantasy sells, and so you don't get to follow the money. So we'll just use those tropes, but we'll, or we'll, we'll use that setting and and go from there so yeah so thank you very much for that discussion i think that was very helpful about fantasy i don't think there's any really good answer one way or the other about this um i think it's just you know that that is a thing that's happening in terms of fantasy being a a trend and but i think we we've we found some very interesting trends to that so thank you